coming up on today's episode of Technoid. There is a big, big mess with the whole Google Pixel 4a, 5G, Pixel 5. I am going to try to break down this tangled web as best as I can, and I'm going to try to make sense of all the leaks that happened over the weekend and on my live stream, which you should, by the way, check out. Also on today's episode, the Google Nest speaker images are out on the web. They've cleared the FCC, and I will discuss the speakers and say whether I like them or not. Also on today's episode, we have to take a look at the Samsung Galaxy Bud Lies, the new bean-shaped earbuds that Samsung actually is planning to release in their August event, which I think is a mistake, and I'm probably wrong in saying that, but I will explain why. And lastly, a casual alert goes out today, so you're not going to want to miss that. All that on today's episode and more, so stay tuned! <laughs> everybody it's your boy Michael here from Technoid welcome back to another episode guys I really hope you're having an excellent day now guys I've been getting a lot and a lot of positivity on the channel we broke 1500 subs we are so close now to the big one 2k not the video game obviously but guys, this is amazing. I cannot believe we are almost at 2,000 subs. Um, I did not even think it was possible to even get to 1,000. So I just want to take this chance to thank each and every one of you, the new subscribers for coming on. To my returning subscribers, thank you as always. And to new people just watching for the first time, I am a tech show host that likes to do things very differently from everybody else. You will see that in this episode. But if you like the content, if you like what I bring to the table, please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on your notifications so you don't miss when I upload and to my returning subscribers as always make sure you hit the like button and share this video out because today's episode we've got a problem and I'm here to solve it so all that out of the way let's get it going so before we talk pixel 4a before we talk anything about Google we got to get the side stories out of the way so the first story up we're gonna go is the Samsung Galaxy Bean so as you know, that headphone has been dubbed the Bean because it looks like a Bean, and I've been covering it since the early renders. Now, a lot of people were indicating that Samsung was going to release this thing alongside the Note 20. I personally said I don't believe it because I think it would contradict the timing with the Galaxy Bud Pluses, and it looks like I was wrong because they are going to release it. Because according to Evan Bless, whatever his name is, I swear to God, I don't even care, he has released renders and he is really trying to pump out all the Samsung rumors. Talk about trying to get clout and recognition. But he is pumping out renders and mock-ups of images and devices, even teaser images of Samsung phones in the event. But taking a look at the headphones, he has pumped out a render of the headphones. Now this is a mock-up of what you can expect it to look like along with its charging case. It kind of reminds me of the Raycon charging case. I don't know why I just said that, but it does look really, really cool. However, it is being said that it will be released in August and I just, I cannot emphasize that I don't agree with that. First of all, the Galaxy Bud Pluses are only six months old. Now, when the Samsung Galaxy Buds first came out, Samsung waited a whole year to release a brand new pair. But at the six month mark, they did a little color refresh. While I wish they would have the colors up to date in launch, at least they gave it a little refresh. Now you're releasing a brand new headphone with all new technology, all new features and everything, and the Galaxy Bud Pluses aren't even out of date yet. Now, this is obviously a good way for them to expand and definitely dive into their headphone department, giving more consumers choices, but I think this is a problem because it just contradicts the timing. And honestly, if I'm being completely honest, I would rather wait six more months for this thing to come out because then you have a brand new redesign. It would be so much nicer in marketing and it would feel new and original. I don't understand why release it six months after the Galaxy Bud Pluses. That's just my opinion. I don't like this one bit, but again, it is my opinion only. You don't have to agree with it. And for those users, if you're concerned about the Galaxy Bean, whatever, don't worry, I might crack those things and give them a review and determine whether or not they are worth to switch over or keep the pair you have. So be on the lookout for that. Now that I got that out of the way, let's head over to Google. All right, let's start it up. So the first story up for Google is that Google Nest speaker. So as you know, Google has been really, really trying to kind of refresh their speaker lineup. And honestly, the speaker lineup is pretty cool. I have to admit, it is a little bit indulging. It is a little 
little bit different, but most of all, with their partner with Nest, it has introduced and revolutionized a brand new way they bring the smart technology and security features. Well, according to so many news outlets that broke the news over the weekend, the Nest speaker is coming and images are out there. Now, this is a redesign of the Google speaker that we have been accustomed to. It is much smaller. It is a little bit bigger, rounder compared to the Google Home. This will be taking the place. It has certified by the FCC and it looks like it will be a brand new device on its own. It will have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities with 30 watts DC power supply. There is no USB-C port or aux port. So again, you're just going to have to live without those features. However, it does look like it will have a mute button in the back so you can keep your privacy so you can manually do what you want. And of course, knowing that it's Google, it will be a very good assistant based speaker. Now, sound quality, we're going to have to wait and see when it comes to that department. But diving further, it looks like this will be the big refresh as Google is hoping to expand its Nest products into its home app and making the Nest ecosystem all into one. Now, this is a good step. I really like the idea that Google is trying to give new and updated features to their speakers, but it also just feels refreshing because it's been four years since we've seen a refresh from the Google Home. So four years later, that's actually pretty cool. So that's the Google Nest speaker. Now we get to the main story, the one you guys are really gonna wanna pay attention to, the Google Pixel 4a, 4a 5G, and the Pixel 5. Now I have been covering this story because I have been having such a hard time trying to follow what the hell is going on. What is going on with this lineup? We get renders of a rumored Pixel 5, we get rumors of a 4a, then we hear the 4a 5G, and it's all over the place. It feels like a tangled web. Well, I'm going to spend a little bit of time trying to dive into this and break down the web as best as I can. And hopefully, if it makes sense to you guys, comment hashtag Google confusion or something like that. But I'm going to try my best. So let's rewind the clock two months ago. So two months ago, I made a video talking about the Pixel 4a not having 5G. The reason was because Google was not planning on putting 5G in their mid-range yet. The goal was to have a mid-range be the regular 4G LTE and then your premium flagship will have the 5G and then vice versa. Now a lot of people have seen that video as it is growing in popularity which I again thank you guys for watching. But a lot of people are saying that I got it wrong and that things have changed. Well, no duh, because it's been two months later. Now I'm not trying to diss anybody that disagrees with me or commented, but let me explain how this happened. So from two months, Google has changed their stance because they want to have a 5G mid-range considering that Samsung and soon to be Apple are all expanding their lineup with 5G. And now that they're trying to make the big push, this is really where it's at. And I really honestly think that Google is trying to play catch up with the competition. And this is smart by them because two months ago, if they had just released it to 4A with no 5G, it would have been a problem. Well, taking a look at this, let's start the breakdown. So let's start with the 4A. The 4A, as you know, is gonna be the same thing. It's the same design as we see the 3A, a small variant that's going to be around $300 to $400. It will have the lower end Snapdragon 730, and it will probably have a plastic body single camera as well. Now that is the model that we know will happen because that's the rumor and all the images online have confirmed it. Now we get to the second image that you guys have saw, a leaked image of some kind of phone with dual cameras. That is the Pixel 4a 5G. Now this was leaked in a code that was released on Friday when I was live on the air with um, Alpha and Sneed. By the way, guys, check that out if you want. But I covered that story and I said I was gonna cover it better. That model, that leaked image you saw is not only the 4A 5G, but a hint at the Pixel 5. I will explain that in a sec. So taking a look at this phone, this is the new XL version because this phone is going to be something what of that XL. Because some people have suggested that that will be a bigger version as it has a fingerprint scanner in the back and it confirms it will have 5G. Now, the reason why Google decided to do this, again, to be with the competition, but also give a better choice. And I'm gonna explain to you also, it's a smart move as well. But taking a look at the device, it will carry 5G, so it's gonna pack the 765G. On top of that, the Pixel 4a 5G, that image and the code name, it will probably have a second camera on there from the reports, probably a little bit lower end camera compared to the flagship, but that is the rumor that was going around over the weekend, and I wanna clear that up. Now we get to the Pixel 5. 
This is basically what I'm saying, the 4A 5G. If you're a little confused, let me break this down. The 4A and the 4A 5G are going to be basically a very similar in body size, but the 4A 5G will be just slightly a little bit better with body screen anyway. But now let's get to that Pixel 5. So now the Pixel 5 XL, those renders that came out last week by XLeaks and everybody was denying and stuff, but now there are some sources coming out saying that is the Pixel 5 and that's going to be the XL variant. Let me explain. The reason why is because Google wants to use the mid-range to be their top selling. You have your small variant plus your higher end small variant while mid-range but higher end. Then you have your flagship. Now, I didn't believe this at first when I saw the images. I did not really believe that this was the Pixel 5 based on the leaks by Front Page Tech. But from what I'm hearing all over the internet and trying to gather as much reliable source, the reason why Google went back on this design, now again, I really had to dig deep for this, so I'm trying not to spread false rumors, but this is the pretense of what people are saying. The reason why Google decided to opt for the fingerprint scanner back on the Pixel device and also a punch hole design with two cameras. The reason is because of the pandemic, the time that they could not get the third camera manufactured. And also this is a form factor that most people are easier with. So when you look at the mid range size and you look at the flagship, they would look easily identical, but with slight differences. So it's basically a personal eye perspective, but also the pandemic kind of threw off their plans. So they want to kind of make this thing very similar and try to get it out there. Now this one is also going to pack the 765G and it's going to have about the same hardware as the 4A 5G. The only difference is it will have an OLED display of higher quality, better screen to body ratio, a better design in terms of the build quality, and of course the rest is history. Now this all sounds so confusing, but what is it that's linking all of these things together with the rumors? Well, it's simple. What's linking all of this together is that they're all gonna be released side by side and Google wants to use this platform with the lineup. You have your lower end, your $300, $400, then you have the 4A 5G, same form factor, but a little bit bigger, that will be secondary, and then you have your flagship that will be the ultimate B game. By having the mid-range and the flagship run almost the same hardware, it'll feel something like the iPhone SE where the iPhone SE runs the technology inside of the premium iPhone, but in a smaller form factor, that's pretty much what Google is going for. Now again, I want to iterate this one more time. I am not trying to spread rumors or false pretenses of anybody, and this is just what I've been able to gather from what I'm seeing as a marketing standpoint, from the speculations online, to most sources out there, I have tried to gather this, and that's as best as I can put it. And I know it is so confusing, guys, but that's the best way I can explain it. They want to have a sequence of three phones all released at the same time. They're going to call it the 4A because it's going to happen. There, there's no way they would call it the 5A. That's what it is. But that's the Pixel lineup for 2020. It is so confusing, but I hope I was able to clear up maybe just a little bit. I, I don't know. So comment down below if I made any sense. Now let's get the casual alert. Okay. Now, this video is longer than normal. I know I spent a little bit of time on the earlier stories and I really apologize guys, but if you've made it this far, comment down hashtag casual alert because it's time to get to that news. Now, with all my reviews and stuff, I always like to talk about opinion-based articles. Why did I say review? <laughs> But this article really is unbelievable. But you know what? I'm not gonna do it. Lieutenant, get in here. All right, lug nut, let's do this. So on today's casual alert, we're calling out Tech Radar, a tech source that claims they are supposed to be supported by its audience and help with buying advice. Well, you absolutely suck at that because this opinion-based article is a garbage. Now, I wouldn't argue this if it was an iPhone related, but you literally put in Samsung and Android devices? Oh, my boy James, you don't know what you've gotten yourself into. For those of you that don't know this article, I'm going to break it down as best as I can. In this article, he explains that we do not need chargers in the box, that we should just buy our own chargers. However, that would be fine for Apple users, but then he goes and puts Samsung users in this. So you know what happens, boy? You know what happens when you say Android users instead of iPhones, James? You know what happens to you? Casual alert! <laughs> I'm gonna need a Pepto-Bismol. I'll see you on the next episode.
Look not out. All right. Thank you, Lieutenant. All right, that's it for today's episode of Technoid. Now, guys, this is one of the longest episodes I've done and definitely one of the crazier ones. So listen, I understand I'm probably going to get a little bit of backlash because I kind of sounded a little different but guys today's episode is again very confusing i apologize if it doesn't make too much sense but i tried to break down the lineup as best as i can so definitely consider it and thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the episode if you did hit the like button if you disliked the video hit that dislike button it helps circulate my videos onto youtube as well as always guys thank you so so much for watching take care everybody have a great start of the week hopefully take care and peace <laughs>